When I was younger, it was, it was my nan. My nan was a big influence on, on me and my career. You know, she would always take me to football or if I was struggling because I needed a fiver for me kit, it was, Nan, can you lend that? Well, I started playing football because of my older brother and older sister. My dad, he believed in me right from the very start. I think family overall, I've got an older sister, older brother and two younger brothers, so I almost feel like I have to, I'm like the knit for them and have to make them proud. You don't want to disappoint these people, you know, because they've been part of the journey. They've put in just as much effort and help. Oh God, this is a throwback. So this picture here was the town teams. It was like the best within your region. I still stay in touch with a lot of these girls. I just loved playing football. You know, I didn't have to worry what was going on at home and I felt comfortable and I guess free. I think I've always had the right people around me. I had a chance to go to America when I was 10. It was probably my first real vision of seeing female footballers be professional. I think it was probably, I was about maybe 17, 18. My last year in college in Florida was when I got, I got picked up for a professional team. It was like, right, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Everything happens for a reason. Just embrace the setbacks if you do get them because I think it can be the tip and edge of actually I'm going to go and do something. My primary school, I played for like the boys team there and I loved it. In high school I had amazing teachers who just believed in me so much. Mr Williamson was the PE teacher at Marine Park Primary School and he put my name down for trials. That was how I got on my first football team. My upbringing wasn't the best, you know, we didn't have a father figure in obviously our house. It was just my mum, me and my brothers and sisters. I think Mr Williamson was massive for us. He recognised something that maybe others didn't and I think that can be the difference in a kid just having one person they can rely on and have support from. Yeah, I think he's very proud. So I was never really too interested in football. It was something that I kind of got dragged around into because my dad was a non-league player and a big fan of it. One day it just clicked and I just loved it and I kind of went from strength to strength as a player. My parents, they were massive and I think any footballer will tell you the same thing. My parents dedicated so much to getting me to training on the bus, train, walk, getting back when it's dark, raining. My dad was like my hero, you know, at the time there was like Rooney. I think Van Persie was really good at the time. It was just like, nah, my, my dad's the number one. As a kid, I always dreamed of playing for England. To play for my country was, was huge. Playing for England is about as great as it can get, isn't it? I want to win the World Cup, bring back some joy to the country. As a kid, I never dreamed of playing in Germany. I always thought I'd play in England for Birmingham, and you know that would be me. The chance to go and play for Dortmund came, and I didn't really hesitate. For not one second have I ever regretted it or thought, oh, this is too hard for me, or I feel like giving up. I, I, I want to embrace the challenge every single day I'm there. To actually have people within football who believe in you, I think it's a massive thing. When you're a coach of kids that age, you have a huge impact to be able to shape and influence young players' minds. That's Mike Dodds there on, on the left. Here. Dodsey was probably one of the most influential people that I had um, growing up in the academy. He was why I always stuck with it and he always challenged me to be a better player. They'll never get the praise that, that they deserve really. They do more for you than, than any coach ever will because they introduce you to the game, they teach you the fundamentals and they keep you enjoying the game. Your dreams are, are your, your goals. They do become like milestones. You know, you, you grow up and you hit one that's on the way to the big dream and you kind of just keep rolling with it. Football's to enjoy, football's to be the best thing that it can be in your life. Ultimately, that pull towards a positive dream is probably the most powerful thing that we can have. When you enjoy it, you'll play your best football and you'll be closer than you were the day before to get into your dream. I started playing football because of my mum and dad. They really encouraged me, they sacrificed a lot. My dad used to get home from work, run in the door, put me in a car, then drive two hours. You know, they travelled the whole world to support me. In high school I had amazing teachers. We used to train at a lunchtime for the football team. My primary school, which was William Harding, I played for like the boys team there. Just absolutely just loved it, just having fun, kicking a ball around, doing something that I loved really. Nice. Yes, this is a good memory, actually. God, I look very tiny. I reckon this is actually like a tournament when I was playing for Ellsbury. 
I feel like I was just having the time of my life, playing alongside friends, just feeling like really lucky. I'm always striving to want to win something with England. So every time you put the England shirt on, it, it's just the best feeling in the world. I love playing for England, it's a dream for me. I was at Loughborough and I shared a room with Claire Rafferty and we got the email at the same time. So I'm facing this way, she's facing that way. Doing work, not. Yeah, we both kind of turn around and just be like, have you? And I'm like, yeah, have you? And we're just going crazy in our room. And obviously rung my mum and dad and something that, you know, I treasure forever really. I think just embrace the setbacks if you do get them. I think I've always had the right people around me. I've had long-term knee injuries and they've been, you know, challenging. It's quite isolating, it's quite lonely. But I think I was really lucky to have the, the support network that I did around me. My s &C coach, which was Michelle Pearson, she would go through so many emotions with me. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Try it. No, I can't. I don't want to. It hurts. Having that person to be able to talk to, to be able to speak about your feelings, I think that's really important. If I'm a kid, I'd just be thinking, I can do what I want if I put my mind to it. For the girls now, they've got so many role models. You should be given every opportunity to try and achieve your dream. You should be able to have fun and enjoy it and not feel like there's so many barriers in front of you. But there's still so many, we've almost like knocked them down and then they're built up again, so you're having to keep knocking them down. Hopefully, if I can inspire someone to live out their dream, that would be something that I feel really honoured to have been a part of. I played football, I thought about football, I've supported football all my life. I only ever wanted footballs for Christmas and birthdays and stuff like that. I started playing football loads outside my first house, just out there every day from the morning to like the evening. I played for a team called Rainford Rangers growing up and that's something that really sticks in my head. It was where really I first remember playing football. It was the first time I remember my dad taking me to a team, training, playing, actually playing on this hard piece of grass, not like pictures we see now. That really is the first memory I have of playing football and my dad taking me to football. I can't believe you pulled this one out and you want me to show the camera this one. Do you know where this was? My nan lives up in Scotland and I've got quite a lot of family up in Montrose. So this is in my nan's house, this. It was always a ball, some sort of ball, an hour leather ball, an hour plastic ball. We used to go up every summer on holiday and just play football, literally. We'd wake up in the morning at seven, eight o'clock, we'd be out in the front, because she lived in the country. And she had a garden that wrapped around the house. She could go all around the garden, she had big goals and all these sorts of things. That was just me from a young age. Just a person who you wanted to be outside all day, kicking a ball around. Every time I step out on the football pitch, I just, I feel like happy to be there. I feel lucky to be there. I remember one of my first coaches, and enough probably doesn't get spoken about in terms of his, his influence. He had an academy manager called Frank McPartland who really, really believed in me. Really believed in me, he was incredible with me. And, in how it made me develop, not just as a player, but I think as a person as well. To actually have people within football who believe in you, I think it's a massive thing, and that's something I'll, I'll take with me for the rest of my life. To play for England is the top, the top, the, like the, the highest thing you can ever do. To receive the phone call from the gaffer when I first did, it's, it's a conversation I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. It was incredible, an absolutely incredible moment. Growing up, you have these dreams of playing for your local team, playing for your country what you can bring up in your imagination and things that you want to believe and you want to come true. Ultimately, that pull towards a positive dream is probably the most powerful thing that we can have. Your dreams are your goals. You hit one that's on the way to the big dream and you kind of just keep rolling with it. They're the ones that take to different worlds and different places. I think if we don't want to have that, we can't really think of what might be. I think I first went to a training session when I was about four years old. I'd watch a game and see something and think that I can't do that. And then I just wouldn't, wouldn't stop until I could do it. We'd wake up in the morning at seven, eight o'clock, we'd be out in the front and just play football. And that was just it. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Used to be that obviously I was at school in the day, go to the training sessions in the evenings and then mum would carry me back on the way home, flat out asleep. I always laugh about me having to go out of football and people say, oh, did you ever dream you play for England? And of course not. And if I had sat in an office trying to sell mortgages, thinking that I just want to play for England, I just want to play for England, people would have think I was absolutely bonkers. Oh, the infamous picture. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's nobody on the phone and I'm a mortgage advisor sitting in my office thinking that I look extremely cool. I was going on different trials when I was a mortgage advisor, still obviously holding on to the dream that I could be a professional footballer one day. And I remember I went on trial at Hereford. It was probably one of the last chances that I had. I took a day off work. The mortgage advisor in me would be fuming with that decision, but that's where the dream took off. 
to actually have people within football who believe in you, I think it's a massive thing. They'll never get the praise that they deserve, really. I was very fortunate to work with Mick McCarthy and Terry Connor when I came into football. And if I had worked with a different manager, who may not have been as understanding or as patient or given me as much guidance, then my journey may not have been as successful. I never lost the self-belief. I was very close to it at times, but I never lost the self-belief. Your dreams are, are, are uh, your goals. They're the ones that take you to different worlds and different places. Ultimately, that pull towards a positive dream is probably the most powerful thing that we can have. Probably the most powerful thing that keeps you going in, in the dark times and in moments where you start contemplating if what you're doing is right. Those dreams, I think, are what keep you on the straight and narrow or keep you going. I think for me, where it started was, it's a local football club called Hinesford, and it's a big part of my family. Ever since being little, my dad took me. I'd be playing football with my brother, shoving him in the nets and, and thinking we were at Old Trafford. When I was younger, it was, it was my nan. My, my dad supported me. I'd always give everything for them. My dad believed in me right from the very start. Took me everywhere, been to every home and away game belief that he had in me from such a young age drove me to, to where I am today and everything I do now is to repay my dad and my family for everything they've done and sacrificed over the years. Don't regret anything, everything happens for a reason. Don't be so critical on yourself, I still do it now. Just enjoy it, do it with a smile on your face. That is so cute. That's me and my little brother in an England kit. All I ever wore was football kits growing up. Whenever I was on the playground, I'd be with the lads and I'd be playing football and they were always amazing with me. I never got bullied or anything, they just wanted me to do so well. The lads would come over from other schools and be like, oh, they've got a girl on the team. But the lads just put their arm around me and knew that we'd, we'd win. They were just always so supportive of me and that was really nice growing up that I knew I had all my lads, yeah, pushing me. The PE teacher at my primary school, he was always someone that encouraged me. I just want to make them proud, really. Mr Rigby and Mr Gregory. They're always messaging, congratulating. I still go into school now and see them. And they were great for me right from the start. They pushed me. They wanted me to, to do really well and do really well in, in my other subjects. They just really believed in me. For me, if I'm a kid, I'd just be thinking that actually I can do what I want. You know, I feel like we have broken barriers. Ever since I was young, I've always dreamed of being in England international and winning things with them. When I was growing up, there was no women's team to look up to. So up for all the young girls and boys now, they have those dreams that they can follow. I knew what I wanted from a young age and I think that made me who I am today. I think dreaming big's always what you should do.